Now, as we have discussed, compounds of cobalt and ammonia, according to Werner. Now, uh, let me highlight here some important aspects of Werner theory that when cobalt chloride reacts with ammonia to form different complexes, then after formation of complex, ligands as well as central atom, they do not show individual characteristics, properties. For example, in the complex like say this, in this particular complex you see the complexes containing cobalt 3 are but we do not get a test for free cobalt ion. That means this part is unionizable. Though cobalt is there, individual characteristic of metal ion that is cobalt is not shown by this complex. Fine. Similarly, these two Cl negative, they are acting as ligand. Fine and do not ionize, do not ionize, that means they have lost their ionic character, they have lost their ionic character, right? So <coughs> while the Cl which is outset, this Cl, it is ionizing. Right? Because it satisfies only oxidation state of matter. Right? So, we should know here that while the complex is formed, the entire property of the individual compounds forming that particular complex are changed. Right? So, this is one very important aspect of uh, Werner theory. Fine. Now next, <coughs> let me do some more examples. Uh, there is one question, we can solve it. For example, uh, the question is, a uh, complex of uh, platinum chloride and ammonia is there. Fine. Now, it is given that coordination number of uh, platinum is 6. In its 6 coordination number, this is given to you and further it is given that this particular complex gives one mole of AgCl in solution. So the question is, predict its structure according to one. Right? So, <coughs> we can conclude here. How we can solve this? The complete hint is here. Right? One mole of AgCl means one free Cl negative on. So that means outside the coordination sphere there will be one C. Central metal atom is platinum. All the three neutral things always satisfy second divalence. Three total coordination number is six. Therefore, other three CL will be inside satisfying both primary as well as second divalence. But this will be ionizable counter ion satisfying only primary valence, right? So if we have to draw its structure according to the method given by Werner, then it will be like 
at three positions there will be ammonia satisfying secondary valency only and other three positions there are Cl satisfying both primary and secondary valency which makes it unionizable Cl. It will not dissolve in water. Fine. And uh, there is one Cl which satisfies only primary valency. Right? So <coughs> this is the structure of this particular compound. So such problems can be asked. They will change such compositions. Suppose there are five ammonia, some different Cl. Coordination number will be given to you, number of AgCl moles are given to you and you have to predict the structure of that compound, right? So such type of questions can be asked on one or two, right? Now, lastly, let's finish this. Now, we are going to discuss limitations of Burner scale. Limitations, right? So now, because it is the starting of uh, structural elucidation for uh, complex compound, the <coughs> mother have given a very very important point regarding two type of valencies of matter, that is primary valency as well as secondary valency. Fine. So the first limitation of Burner was that in uh, that is regarding geometry of coordination compounds. That means when some specific ligands, specific number of ligands are attached uh, with the central atom, then why there is a definite shape? Why the shape is octahedral, tetrahedral or square planar depending upon the number of ligands attached to the central atom. Fine. Now, second, that why certain metals why certain metals form complexes and others do not? Why? So this, uh, this question is not answered by Werner's theory. He could have only explained the structure of uh, different compound form. Right? So this was another limitation. There are certain uh, uh, elements which do not form complexes like sodium. Right? So why it does so? Okay. So, <coughs> third limitation according to Werner is related to that he could not explain two things that is magnetic behavior of complexes and color of the complexes. The complexes are found to be paramagnetic, highly paramagnetic and diamagnetic also and they are having some specific color except few cases fine so he could not explain these three points fine now to explain these three points further we have different theories like valence bond theory crystal field theory molecular orbital theory ligand field theory there are so many uh, theories are there which uh, uh, answer different different questions depending upon uh, these uh, the theories given now after this, we'll discuss mainly two theories which are in syllabus, that is uh, valence bond theory and crystal field theory. So, next topic will be valence bond theory.